Upon the arrival of an EENT cooler to your facility, the cooler should be opened immediately, and the ice pack should be placed in the freezer. Next, you will find a chain of custody. This should be kept in a safe place because we will need it later. You will also find a bag labeled extras and trip links. The trip link should be left alone and should not be open. The extra bottles are in case any other bottles break and you need replacement bottles. These can be left in the cooler or just set aside. You will also find two different types of bottles in the cooler. The first are HAA bottles, which are amber colored and have white caps. These bottles contain a small amount of ammonium chloride as a preservative. You will also find THM bottles. These are clear bottles with blue caps. And they also contain a small amount of a different type of preservative. When collecting a sample from a tap, the first thing that should be done is the aerator should be removed, which I've already done. When you take the bottles out of the bag, you will see that two bottles are wrapped together. One is a sample bottle, the other is a duplicate bottle to be filled with the same sample. After you remove the aerator, you should turn the water on and let the water run for about three to five minutes. This allows the system to flush and allows the temperature to stabilize. Like I said, this takes about three to five minutes. Once that is done, you just fill the bottle up so it's slightly overflowing, cap it tightly, flip upside down to check for an air bubble and to allow the preservative to mix with the sample. If there's an air bubble, you would then just simply uncap, add a small bit of sample, recap, and repeat the step to make sure there's no air bubble. No air bubble should be in the sample. You will also do the same with the duplicate bottle. After you've done this, you will fill out the label on the bottle completely, on the sample and its duplicate. You will also fill out your chain of custody form completely. On the back of the chain of custody form, you will find directions for sampling and shipping and also important phone numbers in case you ever need to call us with any questions or concerns you may have. This chain of custody should be shipped back to us in the Ziploc bag to ensure that it doesn't get wet and it's legible when we receive it. After you've collected your sample, you will simply wrap back up in the bubble wrap along with its duplicate. You would do this for all samples. Then you would just simply pla either place the, the samples in your cooler if you're going to ship immediately. You should place the freezer packs back in here and also you may add extra ice. The samples need to be chilled at 4 degrees Celsius. You can either do this by placing them in the refrigerator or placing them back in here with the ice and freezer packs. I will recommend that if you send with extra ice, you place the ice in a double Ziploc bag. Leaky coolers may be confiscated by the shipping company if not placed in a double Ziploc bag. After this is done, don't forget your chain of custody and bubble wrap or some other shipping material to ensure that the samples are not broken when we receive them at the lab. The cooler should be shipped within 24 hours of, of collecting. We must receive samples within 24 hours of collecting, so I suggest that you ship them immediately, if at all possible.